Good morning, friends and neighbors, and welcome to Sound Bites with Bill Wood, a certified lay minister at St. Paul's United Methodist Church in El Paso, Texas, where our mission is to love God, follow Jesus, and serve others. And again, if you have any joys or prayer requests, please send them to the St. Paul's email address so that we may rejoice with you and pray with you. And now, if you would, please join me in prayer. Gracious God, we come to you in the name of Jesus and praise your name for the many blessings that you shower upon us each day. We thank you and we are most grateful for these. And now, Father, we set ourselves now in a position to hear from you as we read from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. So minister unto us and speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if you would, please open your Bibles to Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and we will read verses 23 through 29. So Hebrews, the 11th chapter, beginning with verse 23. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw that he was no ordinary child, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of, the Pharaoh, of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. He regarded, dis, he regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as a greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. And I believe what this means that he was looking for things it was not that he had not yet seen. And this is what it says in, in, uh, later on in, in Hebrews. He was looking ahead. He believed that, that there was something better, and he was looking ahead for it. So then in verse 27, it says that by faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger, for he, pers perse or he persevered because he saw him who was invisible. And this, I believe this means Christ. And by faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. Now, Moses is the next saint of the long list of saints that the writer of Hebrews mentions in the old, as Old Testament saints that longed to see the promise of God fulfilled. They did not see the promise fulfilled, did not see all that God has promised as a result of Joseph rising to power in Egypt and the seven years of plenty in Egypt and the seven years of famine in Egypt, the brothers were now reconciled and Jacob or Israel and all of his family members, 72 members of them were now living in Egypt. Many years later, Moses entered the, entered the picture. This story begins in Exodus chapter one, which describes the events prior to the birth of Moses and much time had passed since the death of Joseph, and a new Pharaoh was now in power and did not know about Joseph and or the things that Joseph had done. And the Israelites were being severely oppressed. The Israelites had also multiplied to the point that the Egyptians feared that they would join forces with the Pharaoh's enemies and overthrow the Egyptian government. Therefore, they had placed, they were placed in bondage. The Pharaoh had ordered all male children born to the Israelites to be killed, and this was an effort to keep the, the Israelites from continuing to multiply. Then when Moses was born, his parents thought that he was such a beautiful baby that they, by faith, chose to hide him for three months, and then they placed him in a basket put the basket in the Nile River where the Pharaoh's daughter eventually found him. He was raised in Pharaoh's home and eventually chose to be identified as a member of the Israelites rather than living in the luxury of a life of luxury in the Pharaoh's palace. Then after killing an Egyptian shoulder, soldier, 
he fled Egypt and went to live in the land of Midian. The writer does not mention what I think is one of the most significant events in Moses' life, his encounter with the burning bush. There, God called him to go back to Egypt and lead God's people out of Egypt to the promised land. I believe that it was by faith that Moses saw the burning bush and realized that something special was happening, and he approached the burning bush and heard the voice of God calling him and then responded to that calling. And he was, I believe, at that time about 80 years of age. I think that to the Jewish people, Moses was the most reverend figure in their history. He was the leader who rescued them from slavery in Egypt. He received the law of their life from God, and this was of extreme importance to the Jewish people. The writer in these seven verses in chapter 11 of Hebrews on five different occasions mentioned that by faith certain things happened. So let's look at each of these by faith statements. The statement begin, these statements begin with the birth of Moses, which is found in Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. So let us read those verses and see what was taking place in the life of the, of the Hebrew people. It says, Now a man of the house of, this is Exodus chapter 2, verse 1. Now a man of the house of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she got a pompous basket made for him, coated it with tar and pitch, and then she placed the child in she placed the she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the banks of the Nile. His sister, <clears throat> his sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her slave girl to get it. She opened it and saw the baby, he was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. And then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go get one of the Egyptian women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. And the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. And when the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. Now, verse 23 of the 11th chapter of Hebrews says that by faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw that he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's, king's edict. This verse tells us that his parents had great faith. They saw something in the child of God that gave them the courage to defy the king's order. This, I believe, is an encouragement to parents today and grandparents to raise their children in such a manner that they will grow in God's favor. We need to see the potential that God sees in our children and encourage them to be children of God. Barclay's commentary says that there are many legends that had gathered around the name of Moses. One of those legends includes his parents and concerning his birth. And rather than try to paraphrase that legend, I will read it from Barclay's commentary, the letters to the Hebrews from page 184. And it says, There was the faith of Moses, Moses' parents. The story of their action is told in Exodus 2, verses 1 through 10, which is what we have just read. 
Then in Exodus chapter 1, verses 15 through 22, tells how the king of Egypt and his hatred tried to wipe out the male children of the Israelites by having them killed at birth. The legend tells how Amram and Jochebed, the parents of Moses, and that's found in chapter, Exodus chapter 6, verse 20, were worried about the decree of Pharaoh. And as a result, Amram had no contact with his wife. Not because he did not love her, but because he wanted to spare her the sorrow of seeing her children killed. For three years they were apart, and then Miriam prophesied, and Miriam is Moses' sister, prophesied, My parents shall have another child who shall deliver Egypt or Israel out of the hands of the Egyptians. He told her father, What have you done? You have sent your wife away out of your house because you could not trust the Lord God that he would protect the children that might be born to you. So Amron, shamed into trusting God, took back his wife, and in due course, Moses was born. He was so lovely a child that his parents determined to hide him in their house. They did so for three months. Then, according to the legend, the Egyptians struck up a cruel scheme. The king was determined that the hidden children should be sought out and killed. Now, when a child hears another child cry, the first child will cry also. So Egyptian mothers were sent into the houses of the Israelites with their babies. There they pricked their babies until they cried. This made the hidden children of the Israelites cry too. And so they were discovered and killed. In view of this, Amram and Jochebed decided to make a little ark and to entrust their child to the waters of the river Nile. Then that Moses was born at all was an act of faith, and that he was preserved was another. He began by being a child of faith. So this, according to the legend, Moses' dad did not trust God to keep any additional male children safe that might be born in his household. Therefore, rather than risk having additional children, he had no contact with his wife. His trust, trust and faith eventually showed up. The faith of parents then and how we trust God, I believe, plays a, plays a big role in the lives of children. We must be willing to trust God with our children and raise them accordingly. We will continue our discussion of these by faith statements next week. Well, I've enjoyed sharing with you this morning and if you have any comments or different ideas about these verses, please send them to the St. Paul's email address and I will discuss them. Also, if you have heard of any other legends concerning the birth of Moses, uh, I would be willing to hear those, so please send them to the St. Paul's email address. I would love to hear from you, so have a wonderful time with the Lord, and may the Lord continue to richly bless you. Go in peace and in the love of God.